Good morning everyone. Welcome to Riverway Christian Fellowship Sunday morning service. Wherever you are, we pray that God will richly bless you today and that um, no matter what circumstances you're going through, that you will know the presence and the strength of the Lord with you. Uh, I was reading a testimony uh, of an healing minister who unfortunately got COVID-19. His name was Mark McClurry and he's an healing pastor in Northern Ireland. And he's only, he was only 40 years of age, married with three small children. And at the beginning uh, of the first lockdown, he suddenly became very breathless and had chest pains. And uh, he was advised to go to A&E. And they told him it wasn't COVID, but that he had pneumonia. But he, he got, his symptoms got worse and he just couldn't breathe. And they put him on 100% up to increasing it till he was on 100% oxygen. And he said it was just the most terrible thing. He says, um, you feel like your lungs are full and you're drowning. It feels like someone has dropped two bags of broken glass into them. He said he was just in agony. And Mark even rang at this point, rang his wife and said, uh, I think this is it. I think I'm going to die. And he was in such a bad way. And so now critical, Mark was moved to, uh, transferred to the ICU department and hooked up to a CPAP, a continuous positive airway pressure machine. And, but in, in it all, he felt the Lord saying to him, Son, you are more than a conqueror. <laughs> he said, I don't really know what the Lord meant. But he continued to deteriorate and become, becoming feverish. And the consultant said to him, If you don't improve, Mark, we're going to have to put you on a ventilator. And he cried out, he just said he cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I need your help. Please heal me. Uh, and as he lay there, he was listening to some worship music and his right arm was just lying at his side. And as he was crying out to the Lord, he felt that someone grabbed his hand and he looked and the, there was no one there and the nurse was at the end of the bed. And when he asked her, she said she hadn't moved. But he knew that, that someone had grabbed his hand. And then the Holy Spirit reminded him of when Jesus took that hand of the little girl. And um, he said he realised that even in that moment, even if he was put on a ventilator, that the Lord would say, rise up, that he would rise up. Um, and that night the church they uh, started they prayed all night for him uh, they were so concerned they got people to stay up all night praying and um, after that his infection levels began to drop that next morning and um, he uh, recovered and he eventually he was allowed to go home. Because he'd suffered respiratory failure, uh, the consultant said that it would probably take him about a year to recover. But he was saying to God, in this time when the nation is in famine, and the Lord said it's in a time of fear, he said, will you use it? Will you use this experience for good? And so, he felt he should put his story on on YouTube and he made two videos um, and there he could he told people about the Lord and about his experience and the first one he had 1.8 million people watch it and the second one he had 900,000 and he's had people contact him from all over the world and he's been able to 
give be a voice of hope um, and to witness in this time of fear and to encourage people in this very difficult time. I thought, what a lovely testimony. And so I thought you would like to hear that. So this morning, we, we uh, are going to worship the Lord together. We're going to take communion and um, we're going to have God's word. Um, but right now, let's just invite the presence of the Lord. So Lord, we just invite you this morning, Lord, to come in your presence into our individual sitting rooms. Wherever we are, Lord, we say, Lord, will you come and touch my heart? Will you come, Lord, will you, with your healing touch? Will you come with hope? Will you come with peace? Lord, we just commit ourselves into your hands and ask that you will supernaturally, Lord, open things up for each one of us. Lord, we just pray your blessing on the entire fellowship, on every heart that is listening this morning. We pray your blessing and your favour. So we commit everything to you in your precious name. Amen. Bob and Gary, together they are Barry. Brothers at Riverway, reaching you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bob, and this is my friend, Gary. And together, we, we are... are Barry! We hope you have all had a lovely week. As we know, there was a special birthday in the church last Friday, and we would normally have cake at the church to celebrate. So here is a lovely picture of Claire and her cake. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! This week, we had a lovely picture sent in from Helen Cooter. Helen wanted in to encourage anyone who is perhaps losing hope. Be blessed to know that the Lord has got every situation covered. Great news to share today. As we know, we are going into tier two. We are really happy to announce that there will be a prayer meeting this Thursday at 10.30 a.m. in the church. Hooray! Further news to come in the newsletter, which will be sent out this week. That's all from us. Have a great week and enjoy the rest of the service. Bye! Bye. Good morning. Today's reading is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them for ever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, 
and he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name When the sun is shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Lord, blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road of this suffering Though there's pain in the offering Lord, blessed be Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in love, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name Give and take away Give and take away Our hearts will choose to say Glory to the newborn King, peace 
on earth a mercy my own God and sin is reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With a charming host of blame Christ is born in Bethlehem
Hello friends, God bless you. It's time that we come now to the communion table and everybody is welcome to the Lord's table and we're here to partake of the cup and of the bread of the Lord Jesus Christ and I do trust that you are already ready with your bread and your cup. You know, many weeks I've just asked you just to listen to prayer and we go into partaking of the communion. But this week I just want you to pray. I want you right now just to bow your heads before God and to thank the Lord for his bread and his cup. In your own heart, so whether you like to pray aloud or stand or lift up your hands, whatever you like to do, I just would like you to just have a minute of silence as you come to the Lord's table. So shall we all together bow right now? Lord Jesus, what a privilege it is to be able to come to your table and partake through the grace of God, that which represents the atoning sacrifice of our precious and wonderful Lord Jesus. We thank you for dying for each one of us. We thank you that your blood was shed for us. We thank you, Lord that your body was pierced for us, that you are the perfect sacrifice for each and every one who loves you, who owns you as Saviour. We thank you. Now, friends, we turn to the bread which speaks of the body of the Lord Jesus. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me so let us take the bread friends body of Christ broken for us we give you thanks most gracious Lord in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let us partake of the cup and remember the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, friends.
Yes, Lord, we lift up our hands and hearts to you. Lord of all the earth, creator of heaven and earth, who came down, was crucified and was risen and ascended into heaven. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are now seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for each and every one of your people. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your tender mercies. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Friends. <laughs>
God bless you, friends. Good that you're with us again. You know, there are so many things that are going down in the world today which are discouraging quite a lot of people. The virus, the first wave, and now this second wave and what it's doing. People losing their businesses, people losing their place of employment. Single mums struggling in these times and looking at Christmas and feeling how can we we survive. Friends and families also which have been cut off for quite some time. I know concerning my wife and I we've had a new granddaughter Mabel. She was born in, in March and we've not seen her but for the once in all this time. We would love to see her and lots of families are like this. And then we've seen a little of our great grandchild Caleb and uh, we, we would like more time with the babies but uh, as things are things are so difficult you know churches are, are missing out on their fellowship and their worship together and they just wish they could just get back into the churches so there's a lot of things that are discouraging a, a lot of people and we're all as it were in the same boat isn't that right friends so what do you do to keep your mind and your thoughts positive? What do you do? You know, it's so important in difficult days to protect our minds and our thoughts. Our minds and our thoughts are the number one battlefields that the enemy enters into in our lives as believers. He would like to take advantage of the bad news that we have so often coming across from the news desk. If the enemy wants to bring you and I down, he will go for our minds. He will go for our thoughts. Isn't that right, friends? The wilderness temptations for our Lord Jesus Christ, his personal warfare with Satan concerning battling the mind, battling the thoughts. And Jesus, like us, face his battles with the enemy and Jesus he, he shows us does he not how to deal with the enemy trying to get into our minds and into our hearts he just rebuked the enemy he wouldn't have anything that the enemy would place to stick in his mind he rebuked it he didn't want it he wouldn't meditate on it he wanted it out of his life and he shows us that's the what we should do if the enemy, you know, can take away our joy, he can bring in the negatives. Isn't that right, friends? He can remove some of our faith and some of our hope in our lives. But we remember that the joy of the Lord, praise God, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we need to keep that joy. And it's the Lord's will that we keep our hope, our faith and our joy, no matter what the world's going through, no matter what the enemy would seek to do. As the Lord fought the enemy, fought the negatives, he's showing us we must also fight the negatives. We must not, as it were, just sit down and let the negatives grab hold of our hearts and take us down. But we need to fight the negatives. God in his mercy has given us the armour of the Lord. Isn't that right, friends? When we go to Ephesians chapter 6, God has given this wonderful armour. And the armour's there like a helmet on our heads to protect us. And with all what is happening in the world, we will not sit back and let the negatives take us. But we will stand in the armour of the Lord. Praise God. And we will stand strong in him. So we will not sit back. We will not let the enemy build strongholds in our minds. We will resist all the negatives. Because we are God's people. And we have a strength. And we have an authority with the Lord. You know, I believe that love is very powerful. It's like a mighty weapon. A mighty weapon that we can keep within our hearts and let it flow through our minds and through our, our thoughts. Now, I know that human love is, is bankrupt. I know that. It's fittle. But according to Romans chapter 5, verse 5, 
God has placed in our hearts and in our lives his own love. Isn't that right, friends? His own love is shed abroad in our hearts. And with this agape love of God, we turn to God, we love God, we turn to others and we love other people and we love ourselves. And that is a great protector of our hearts and minds. But I believe there's something else, friends. I believe in the power of praise. I'm sure you do. I believe in the power of praise. It says in Psalm 22, God inhabits the praises of his people. There is no greater lifting up of our hearts and the lifting up of God's presence within our lives than praising God and allowing the presence of God to be with us. That we would feel the presence as we praise the Lord. If we want to walk in his presence, friends, then we need to turn our hearts to praise. I believe in praise and I'm sure that many of you do also. I always remember reading the book on Praying Hyde. Now, I've read this book on several occasions. It's always been a blessing in my life. But there's a part in the, in the, in the book itself that um, gave a, a, a real insight into the man's life, John Hyde. He was a man who was known for being a great prayer warrior and seeing many, many prayers answered. But he was always sensitive to things that would hinder his prayer life. And he asked the Lord, Lord, is there anything that is hindering, standing in the way? And he felt the Lord speak to him and say, yes, you do not praise me enough. And so he was always asking the Lord, but he realised that he needed to praise the Lord. He needed to praise the Lord for his goodness. And so he turned to praise. Are we in our lives robbing the Lord of praise? We may be always praying and asking the Lord, but do we feel that we are robbing him of the praise that he deserves? I know I must put my hand up to this, that I do not praise the Lord enough. But I'm encouraged from the psalmist to always praise the Lord. Because in the praise of our God, there is power. David in the Old Testament, he rose to become king with a heart that just wanted to praise God. That's all he wanted to do. He wanted to praise God. From a child to a king, in every circumstances of life, he would write songs. Songs of praise to the Lord. That in every situation, in every problem, even when he had sinned before God, he would always turn to the language and love of praise and praise of God. The Psalms bring songs of power that change moods. You know, when we sing positive songs, the songs of the Lord, it changes our mood. It changes atmospheres. It brings a power, a power, the presence of God when we praise him. Because there's victory in the songs of praise and God wants us to live in victory, friends. Isn't that right? Science has come to realise that every planet and every star in the universe has its own sound, its own note, if you like. Knowing that God has created the universe, it means that he has created a great orchestra throughout the entire universe. And the sounds of the stars and the planets are the sounds to praise God. And God wants us to fill our lives with praise. Heaven encourages praise. When we think of heaven, it is full of praise. <laughs> now, we believers, we're going there. We're going, we're going to a dimension which is absolutely full of praise. And God wants that dimension touching our hearts and touching our lives. He asks us to sing his praise. Because why? Not just for him, but to touch our lives. Because we get the benefit of that presence of God and that sense of victory as we're praising God. 
we too are touched and changed when we truly praise him with all our hearts and with all our souls with all our minds we are blessing god and there is a power in that friends proverbs says a merry heart is good medicine a merry heart is good medicine and praise of god helps us to have a merry heart god wants us to be merry it's not just at christmas time to have a merry christmas but he wants us to always be the people who have a merry heart god does not want us to be negative he does not want us to live without hope without faith without love he wants us to praise him in all things you know church worship leaders have a great job to do when bringing God's people to a place of singing the praises of God they have a great work to do and I thank God for those in our church who have over the years led the congregation to praise God and they have given themselves I have noticed that sometimes when the leaders have gone forth on the platform I have known as the pastor they have gone through tough times tough experiences and yet there they are on the platform are flowing in the praise of God and seeking the people of the Lord to follow after them but you know if we the people of the Lord and the congregation are not praising the Lord through the week it makes it a tough job for when the leaders of worship are trying to get us to praise the Lord because there's nothing there within there's been nothing there with them it it needs to be that when we join together praise God that there's praise going on and flowing out of our hearts that when the worship leaders get up and they, they lead us out into worship we are just flowing with them in the praises of God because we're not running on empty we're running on the praises of God through the week praise the Lord so we Christian believers we've got good news and with that good news comes the praise of God that God reigns over all things and we worship him and bless him we all realize that Satan hates the praises of God Satan would rather us praise wood praise stone praise silver praise God uh, gods of gold anything but really praise God Almighty worshiping this that and the other he hates it when he sees you and I praising the Lord people think you know uh, it's okay to rant and rave at a football match and throw your arms up in the air but you are a religious nut if you did that kind of thing in praise to God in church that's just a no-no <laughs> it's as if the enemy does not want us to be free in our worship of praise but God loves it God loves it it's as if our expressions of praise to the enemy are weapons and the secret is they are weapons and they do bring fear in the enemy's camp when we sit up and we worship and we praise God it was silly you know for Jesus to spit on the ground and to make clay and to put it on the eyes of a man who was blind but it gave him his sight people might think that we are silly when we lift up our hands before God in worship silly when we express ourselves but even Jesus did silly things but it had power to it it was silly for a warrior to go to the waters as a leprosy man and to bathe in dirty water and receive his healing. It was a silly thing to do, but yet it had power. It was silly for Moses to say, let's lift up a bronze snake on a stick and let that release healing. What a silly thing to do and yet it released the people from sickness it was silly for Moses to get hold of a tree and throw it into a, 
a, a poison water place and people were then allowed to drink of the water. What a silly thing to do if waters are poison to get hold of a, a tree and throw the tree into the waters. It was silly. Silly but powerful. Powerful. It was silly for, for Israel to march round Jericho seven times shh, in silence. But on the seventh time to shout and that the walls came, came down. And that saved them three years of siege warfare. That they was able to walk into the city after seven days. Silly thing to ask people to do. And when God asks us to praise him with all our heart, it is not silly. It is the right thing to do. There are some days, you know, when I feel that my prayer life and my, my praise is that weak, it falls to the ground. Instead of going up there to the throne of grace, it's as if my words just kind of fall out of my mouth and fall to the ground because it's so weak. But you know, it's not weak to God when we're like that. God just loves to hear our voice. Whether we're in strength or in weakness, God loves to hear our voice of praise. I know when my children come and they come to me and they speak to me, I'm so glad that they come and they speak to me. And Father-hearted God loves it when you and I go to him. No matter if we feel weak and our words are weak and our, our, our praise is weak, it is sweet to the Lord. So don't let the devil intimidate you to say you're not going to get anywhere in your prayer life and in your praise to God because that is not so. Heaven loves it. We have so much to praise God for, isn't that right, friends? We wake up and we praise God. We turn to our devotional time and we praise the Lord. We go to have our lunch, uh, our supper, whatever, and we praise God for the food that we have. We praise him in those meal times. We praise him for friends and we praise him for family. We praise him for the beauty of creation and for life that he has given to us. We praise him for the Son of God who died upon the cross. We praise him for the Holy Spirit that dwells in our hearts and in our lives. We praise God for his word and we praise him for the revelation that comes out of his word that touches our hearts and blesses us. We praise him for answered prayer. We praise him for life eternal and sins forgiven. We praise him that one day we're going to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to live in that dimension of praise. And as the scriptures say, let everything within us praise the Lord. Yes, I believe in the power of praise. What about you? Let us close, friends, in a prayer. I want to pray a hymn as we pray. So let us pray. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like me his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Angels help us to adore him. Ye behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwell us all in time and space. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise with us the God of grace. God bless you, friends. And let us continue to praise the Lord together every day now. And let us defeat the enemies trying to get into our minds and into our hearts. We will be a people of praise. God bless you. God go with you.
the blessed trinity Who was and is and is to And he shall reign forevermore. And he shall.